Now, I heard this morning from ANZ Chief Economist uh, Sharon Zolan, who, oh, she spoke so well uh, and incredible. The New Zealand economy, she said, can contribute half of its economic growth in the past five years to the growth simply from having a high immigration. We're a small population that has a large primary sector that pre-COVID had record low unemployment and we relied heavily on migrant workers. All you do is bring in border closures and all of that uh, turns on its head. It's not just about tourism. It takes a few minutes of browsing uh, through a lot of employment websites post-COVID here in New Zealand to discover the pages and pages of job listings, seeking employment in every part of our primary sector due to those borders being shut to our valuable migrant workers. And this is one of my biggest issues I want to continue to follow very closely on Serious Country. Not for the fact of uh, workers coming into our country and taking away jobs from Kiwis. It's got nothing to do with it. It's more the flow-on effect of the consequences, not economically, but the health and safety and animal welfare issues that I'm so worried about. Uh, And the fact that this is getting parked because of the election is my other biggest worry. But Minister Farfoy, we can't just park up the tractors. Now, the privilege is all mine, who would love that I said this, to welcome to Serious Country Employment Spokesman Chris Lewis from Federated Farmers. Kia ora, Chris. Let's uh, start. Can we actually outline, because you, I know you've done a lot of work, you've sent me through, give us a scale, give us some numbers around how serious this is. Yeah, just for the tractor drivers alone, they're uh, predicting a shortage of 700 to 1,000 drivers shortage for shares. Uh, at least 200 uh, coming in. And you also got the vets. Uh, that's a bit of an unknown quantity, but it could be number 50 to 100 shortage there. So big issues. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Joel Rock, our producer here's um, partner, Sarah, is a vet. And I know they've done any, everything they can to keep her here in New Zealand uh, for that absolute fact. Okay, so what's the work that you've been able to do with the government and your role lobbying from Federated Farmers? Since the start of COVID-19 lockdown, we've been on the case of this. We started around the dairy farm workers and employees, and we've been advocating for those. And then it got to about April, and we looked at tractor drivers and shearers. It's going to be a big uh, a big shortage. So for the last probably six months, we've been hard on this. And uh, talking to the ministers, the ex-minister, and now the new current minister, who seems to be very good to deal with. And we've been just pushing the case week by week, day by day. Some days I've talked to Immigration New Zealand three times a day just to uh, make sure they, they hear our message. And uh, and I've talked to the ministers a few times, also their senior staff. So it's been a constant battle. And of late, we've been sending them letters just to reinforce how serious of an issue this is for everyone, not just rural communities, but New Zealand. Chris, I know you're also dairy spokesman for Federated Farmers. Um, I, we spoke to Roger Parton from Rural Contractors last Wednesday, and that was on the day that Dairy NZ said, we've got migrant workers able to come. It was an absolute kick in the guts on the same day that all these rural contractors were declined applications to be able to bring these people in. Um, how do you how do you deal with that? And how, and when you've got so many people that you try and represent across our sector, and make sure that it's fair. Look, uh, so I've had a job promotion, no longer dairy chair. That's Wayne Langford. Now <laughs> Sorry. I'm on the board at large. <laughs> so that's a step up from dairy chair, hopefully. So now I represent all industries uh, fairly. So yeah, I can see where they're coming from. I'd be very very frustrated, and I was frustrated advocating for them. Uh, seeing that, but on the other hand, I had a slight celebration that after six months of hard work, we got somewhere. So, you know, you take a step forward, then you take a step back. So, yeah, this is why in, in Ferry Farmers, when you're advocating on behalf of rural communities and our members, uh, you get these frustrations and uh, they give you they give you um, one pat on the back and on the other hand, they give, it, give you a boot up the arse so, <laughs> on these uh, announcements. So, yeah, uh, I feel for them. Um, let's talk about, uh, to stay on agricultural contractors, 
The grave concern if uh, a lot of this the inability to cut and harvest feed doesn't happen, what sort of flow-on effect will that have from a health and safety perspective and an animal welfare perspective that you're most concerned about? Look, you know, last year, Sarah, or sorry, this year, we saw the big droughts over most of the North Island and parts of the South Island. So, you know, harvesting feed is so crucial to feeding our livestock. And uh, when you don't harvest it at the right time, you can lose tonnage um, and you can use qual- you lose quality. And just the storage of supplement was reinforced, especially during the Hawke's Bay. So um, what could happen? Yeah, we, we could run into uh, shortage of stock food. Or if that happens, we may have to import more palm kernel. And you certainly, the Greens won't like that, will they? Uh, you know, having to rely on those boatloads. So New Zealand is traditionally about growing grass, harvesting it and putting it in the bunker or growing uh, crops to feed our animals in New Zealand. And we top up with palm kernel. So it's crucially important that in these couple of weeks, Crops grow in the ground, silage gets harvested the next three, four months and stored away for, you know, whatever comes this summer. And it's looking like another dry summer, isn't it? Our next guest I know is knee deep in the middle of shearing and uh, I'd love to know what, what, what feedback are you getting from the Shearers Contractors Association on how they're getting through this season, prelim? Yeah, look, um, I was born on a sheep and beef farm, and I've uh, I've used the hand piece a few times. And I was pretty uh, I was born, growing up uh, doing that, helping the dagging, done a bit of shearing, and I'm hopeless, really am hopeless at it. And it's not something uh, I was very good at. So just to say, let's train some New Zealanders. Well, I know how hard of a job it is and backbreaking of a job it is, and I chose not to be that. And supposedly took easy rick and milk cows, but uh, you can't just train up people overnight to do this skillful job of taking the, the wool off sheep and, um, you know, producing a world-class product. So, you know, it takes years upon years upon years to be that good. And sadly, I never made it. Um, I dropped out. So it, it is tough. It is hard work. And, uh, yeah, we need to back our, our shearers to bring uh, these skilled uh, shearers into the country, but also uh, invest money into training our own. But it's um, seasonal work. Not everyone wants to do it, do they? What's Federated Farmers doing to ensure the the well-being of our people on the ground through this traumatic time in terms of being able to uh, ensure that health and safety is is paramount um, to our major contractors that we would be absolutely lost without? Yeah, look, uh, a lot of our elected around the country are also contractors themselves or um, obviously use a lot of contractors. So it's something we've, we've all had a conversation with them. You know, it's help is around uh, the training of drivers. And so behind the scenes, uh, whether it's in the South Island or the North Island, we've been working with MSD, MPI to set up uh, tractor driving courses and encouraging people to, to join them. But, you know, the, uh, the people uh, who are on those courses, some have been some um, gold nuggets, but there's also been some who, who are not. And so it's like drafting fat lambs and skinny lambs. You know, not every lamb running through is going to be the fat lamb and it gets drafted off to be a superstar. So to find these people to uh, and train them, it's not an easy task. And when you f- find them and train them, it does take a few thousand hours to be uh, a master craftsman or a master uh, at baling silage or, or mowing. So, yeah, it's going to be a work in progress and we're not going to solve it in the next six months, despite what politicians tell us. Well, this is the thing. Going in, as you said, six months, we've only got a month um, and a countdown to an election. Uh, in terms of the major parties, where does everybody stand on how we manage health but also the economy when it comes to immigration that you've been following? Um, I heard Grant Robinson saying we could have international students here as soon as January 2021. Are you getting any feedback that we can pass on to the industry that the hope is around the corner? I think the biggest issue is having confidence in quarantine. So once they have confidence in quarantine, which I think the government has now, uh, then there should be no excuses of bringing these people in. And so you're seeing now they've got some good testing and quarantine, uh, they've got some good processes, and they've got some good facilities. So going forward, if the government believes uh, in what they're doing and how they're running these quarantine facilities, there should be no excuses. They should be able to bring in a few thousand every week, New Zealanders and skilled migrants into the country, 
and be no risk to the health of New Zealand. Mm. And so in the next few weeks, we'll be pushing hard to make sure that the government uh, stands by the word and backs agriculture because you look at the financial figures today, uh, it's not pretty reading, is it? That this country needs our farmers and our contractors and our sharers and our beets to be working bloody hard to um, you know, help this economy and keep it going. Mm. Before you leave, Chris, we're talking A&P shows. What's your favourite local A&P show? Of course, it's going to be the Waikato one, best in the country. What makes it great? I haven't been to well, the Waikato. Well, it's not just an A&P show, but it's also uh, you know, all the, uh, the, the side attractions like the circus, the rides, you know, and all the other stuff. You know, and, and, of course, what makes it is the people you mm. know, and the characters at the show. So that's why, why, why Waikato is the best, and I'm a bit one-eyed on that one. I think when it comes to your local community, you're allowed to be one-eyed because then, because that, to me, is pride. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Uh, board at large and, of course, Employment Spokesman for Federated Farmers, Chris Lewis. This is Sarah's Country.